Hey, Shabbat Shalom, Israel. Hopefully everyone had a good Sabbath and got some good rest. Uh, tonight at sundown um, starts a 10-day countdown to Passover. And this year I'm super excited because the pattern and how Passover happens this year is exactly like it happened in Messiah's last year, actually the year he died and three days and three nights later rose from the grave. And we want to look at that pattern and, and not only just the pattern, but also the importance of it. I just want to read a passage here in Luke 22, 15 through 20, where it's written, And he said to them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before my suffering. For I say to you, I shall certainly not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of Elohim. And taking the cup, giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I shall certainly not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of Elohim comes. And taking the bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the renewed covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. And this is what this is all about. Passover is that covenant meal. In Corinthians 11, um, people know it as the Master's Supper, or some people call it communion. But really what that is, if uh, Paul's actually quoting, do this in remembrance of me, he's talking about the Passover uh, meal. This is the covenant meal, the meal of freedom. It's really huge when you think about the historical significance of it. Um, there's a I'm going to be getting into uh, talking about the day of the resurrection today, but I want to give you some re uh, some good resources to do your own research and some good books that will uh, help um, build this up a little bit too. So without further ado, I'm going to share um, a friend of mine, Todd Bennett. He has wrote a whole series of the Walk in the Light series, but um, this particular book, Salvation, you may notice on the cover here there's a door. Um, now this is important when it comes to Passover because um, if you remember the Shema, it says, you know, in the Deuteronomy uh, 6 4, it says, Shema, O Israel, Yahuwah our Elohim, Yahuwah is a Kad. In the ancient Hebrew, if you look at a scroll, that first word Shema, it ends with an ayn, which is a picture of a big eye, um, almost like to see. And the last word, a kad, um, ends with a dalet, which is a symbol of a door in the um, ancient Hebrew. So, and it's enlarged. Both the ayn and the dalet um, is enlarged. And it's basically say, do you see the door? And it's important because during Passover, this is where they would apply the blood to the lintel and the two doorposts. Um, and we see this picture. Um, of a door. Messiah says, I am the door. And in other places, he, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And it's so significant with Passover is to enter into uh, that covenant relationship with him. And this book is really powerful. So um, if you haven't checked this out, I'll put a link below uh, to get this. By the way, if you need it, just text me or uh, write me and I'll get this to you. Um, because it is a game changer in how you understand what salvation is. And in light of Passover, it, it, it fills in a lot of uh, things that a lot of people aren't taught. So that's one resource. Another thing I want to share with you is um, this piece of paper. I'll put a PDF file. And this has Hebrew terms concerning the pointed times of Yahuwah. And um, if you're not familiar with the scriptures, this will give you uh, different appointed times and the scripture references so you can study this out yourself. I think this will be helpful for people that are new um, or people that are even um, just a good reference. So uh, I'll, I'll leave that below as well. And um, one other thing I want to share right now, um, on my website, I'll actually put a link to um, TorahCalendar.com's 83 page paper on the Sabbath resurrection um, and they've done an outstanding job that will go way in more detail than what I'm going to do with this short series I'm going to do big picture stuff but they have a booklet that literally kind of goes through a lot of the points that I'm going to be bringing up they also have this awesome graphic on there that you can actually go and download and it will cover a lot of the things I'm going to be getting into so 
Um, and if you want one of these posters also, you can print one off, go to their site, print one off. Um, I have a few extra. If you want one, just let me know. I uh, can send you one too, just so you can have this. These uh, resources can be really helpful when trying to understand what the scripture is actually teaching about the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahushua Messiah. So let's just address the elephant in the room. Most people, um, the biggest uh, theory or tradition when it comes to the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahushua Messiah is the Good Friday to Easter uh, Sunday scenario. And I want to do something what I do with a lot of people when I talk to them is something called the finger test, even though thumbs aren't fingers. Um, we'll just uh, uh, call it that. But um, the, the finger test is basically, in Matthew 12, there's a prophecy. Messiah told us that as Jonah was in the belly of the great fish, so for three days and three nights, so the Son of Man shall be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. And many people are aware of this prophecy, but a lot of people haven't actually counted this thing out. So I like to have people, when I'm talking to them, is to have them use their hands, the finger test here, and from the you know the Good Friday to Easter Sunday, count this out. And a lot of people are always shocked. It's just funny watching people count this because they you know it doesn't add up. We're gonna do it here in a second. So get your fingers out. If you have fingers, you can use your toes. If you don't, or you can use something else. But use your hands here and actually count this out. It'll help. So let's just count it out. I'm instead of using the 14th, the 15th, and the 16th, which would be Hebrew days of the month for the um, this scenario, I'm going to just say Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so people that uh, are familiar with Good Friday, Easter, Sunday can do this. So let's count Friday day, that's one day. Friday night, that's one night. By the way, you're having one hand for days, one hand for nights. Saturday day, that's two days. Saturday night, that is two nights. Sunday day, that is three days. Sunday night, that is three nights. What, would we, we have the resurrection on Monday morning? For a lot of people, this is a huge problem, and it is, because you cannot get three days and three nights from Friday, however you count it, and have a resurrection Sunday morning. It's just not gonna happen. And the reason why this is important, I wanna address this first, because um, no falsehood or no lies of the truth uh, 1 John 2, 21. Um, and if you find something that just does not add up, um, we gotta, we definitely got to question it. And sometimes exposing the lie first and, and just letting people see the lie, that it doesn't add up, now we can address what the scripture actually says about the day of the resurrection. And we're going to cover the three days and three nights later. But first, let's just go to the scripture and see what it says the day of the resurrection is. And I want to start off by, um, many of you probably have some sort of English version that, you know, if you go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, many of you are saying like, oh, I've read the scripture. It says on the first day, the first day of the week, the first day of the week. And it, you know, the first day of the week, the first day of the week, the first day of the week, the first day of the week. And, um... Yeah, it does in the English version, but let's look a little bit de uh, deeper and we may find out some very interesting things you may not be aware of. First of all, you, um, I've highlighted this word Sabbath here. Um, actually, first of all, let's just address this word day. In most of these, I highlighted it in red here, but in most translations, it's going to be italicized, meaning it's not there in the original text. They actually had to insert that in there. So a more literal translation of these would be the first of the week first of the week so it doesn't even mean the first day of the week they just inserted that word in there but more importantly the the, the part i want to just go right after is this of the week what is that word of the week that's translated under all these different examples and this may shock you but the word of the week is the same same exact greek word as sabbath right here this word and this word are the same in the greek it's Sabbath. As a matter of fact, in the Greek, it's the Strong's, the G4521, it's Sabaton. And if you look this up, you have to do the, your own research, you look this up, you're going to find out that the Hebrew origin of this word is Shabbat. And is uh, the H7676, uh, which is the um, Sabbath. 
Um, and the primary biblical use of this word is Sabbath, the seventh day of each week, which is a sacred festival on which the Israelites are required to abstain from all work. This is what you'll find if you look this up in, you know, Esau, uh, Bible Hub, uh, Blue Letter Bible, whatever you're looking at. This is the primary use of this word. So why did they translate it this way? When especially when of the week is the last entry under this thing. Why didn't they go with the primary usage? Um, not all translations did this. Matter of fact, some that translate very literally, like the Young's literal translation, notice how they translated this. Um, uh, it goes the first of the Sabbath. Some translations said the first Sabbath. Um, and all these examples, again, it goes first of the Sabbaths, first of the Sabbaths, first of the Sabbaths. Um, and they translate it more literally. Also in... Um, the Good News of Messiah, this is the Messianic Israel uh, Standard Bible, they also translate very similar to the Young's literal translation with the first of the Sabbaths. Now, this may sound really kind of crazy if you haven't heard this before, but what does first of the Sabbath, uh, uh, Sabbaths mean, or the first Sabbath? Well, in the festival, or I should say, going back to Leviticus 23, it says, after the Sabbath, um, the day after the Sabbath, you shall wave an omer. And basically from that day, you count out, you can say 50 days or seven weeks, or which will contain seven Sabbaths, um, that will lead up to the Feast of Weeks or the Shavuot or Pentecost. And I'll read that verse here in a second. But there are seven, well, I really want to point out there are seven Sabbaths in that sequence. And so when it's saying the first of the Sabbaths, it's talking about it's the first of the Sabbaths and they count to Pentecost. And I'll read the scripture in Leviticus 23, uh, 15 through 16. And you shall count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath, from the day which you brought the omer of the wave offering, seven complete weeks, even to the time after the seventh Sabbath shall you number 50 days. Then you shall offer a new grain offering to Yahuwah. And I want to show you kind of a chart here. I'll put a, a link so you can have this yourself. This is actually this year's in 2020. Um, you'll notice that the 14th Passover ends up in the middle of the week where the seventh day, the Sabbath is the seventh day. But the first of seven Sabbaths is right here. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have seven Sabbaths that will lead up to Shavuot. And this is this this type of pattern happened very similarly in 34 CE when um, Messiah was on the earth um, during that last year. So I guess in this first video, this may be kind of a shocker for you, but um, you're going to find out more why this is um, locked down to a resurrection on Sabbath as we get into this a little bit more. But uh, it's really just important. Messiah actually rose on Mia Sabaton. And uh, when we come back, we're going to be looking at the three days and the three nights. Um, and it's a little bit different than a lot of people think. And I'll say even a lot of people in the Hebrew roots get this part wrong. So... Till next time, shalom.